Hi everyone, Brendan Hodak here. Welcome to Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. <laughs> Gorsh! Today we're going to be breaking down the voice of me, Goofy. Who doesn't love Goofy? He is one of those characters who immediately puts a smile on your face. <laughs> Gorsh! Many different actors have voiced Goofy over the years, but he has been consistently voiced by Bill Farmer since 1987. It is his version of Goofy that we will be breaking down today. Let's break this voice down. <laughs> Gorsh! That sounds great. Component number one, the vocal cords. Goofy's voice is typically in a low to neutral pitch range. We hear a real solid connection of the voice, or as we talk about it here on Voice Breakdown, he has a decent amount of compression. You do not hear any air leaking when he speaks. However, he does have occasional breaks in pitch and compression in which his pitch raises quickly and the voice becomes breathy. Hoy hopes! He's got hoy hopes! Also, we sometimes hear slight vocal fry in his lower pitches. Vocal fry is that crackling, popping sound you can make with your vocal cords. Uh... But for Goofy, this is a very solid vocal fry that effortlessly slides into his typical chest voice. Uh, well, Max. Well, I don't know, Max. Well, those sound just like my vocal cords. Component number two, the larynx. The larynx is a crucial component to master for Goofy. We have discussed how the larynx can go up or down to affect the timbre or quality of the voice. Most voices we have done so far on Voice Breakdown have had a static larynx position, meaning that the larynx is either high, neutral, or low, and it stays in that position. One of the most distinctive qualities about Goofy's voice is that he doesn't have a static larynx position. In fact, that goofy quality is made in the transition of the larynx moving from one position to another. For example, as I do the famous goofy laugh, you can see my larynx drastically move from low to high. In order to do his laugh, simply say, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The first part, uh, should be very short and have a low larynx. Then ascend the larynx on the hy, 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 oh hy, oh hy. Component number three, the tongue. Goofy does have a bit of a shine to his voice, despite his lower pitch and fluctuating larynx. This is accomplished by the tongue. So you want to raise the back of the tongue. By raising the back of the tongue, we increase the brightness of the voice. How many cups of sugar does it take to get to the moon? Component number four, the soft palate. Not every component is simply one extreme or the other. The larynx isn't always 100% up or 100% down, for example, but sometimes falls somewhere in between. The soft palate for Goofy is like this. We do want to think of the soft palate as primarily raised. This will give us more of that Goofy sound. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, uh. That being said, it doesn't need to be 100% raised all the way, as we still want some of that nasal resonance. This will take some experimentation to get just right. Raise that palate! Component number five, articulation. Articulation is certainly an important component for Goofy. One thing to note is that he has very rhotic speech. This means that his R sounds are very pronounced, especially during what we call R-colored vowels, such as air, R, or, and ear. You can remember these common R-colored vowels with the sentence, there are more here. <laughs> there are more here. Also, Goofy often diphthongizes his vowels. A way to classify vowels is by referring to them as monophthongs and diphthongs. A monophthong is simply one vowel sound, such as a uh, or e, but a diphthong is a gliding between two vowel sounds. So we can have the monophthongs a uh, 
and e, or we can have the diphthong i, i. For goofy, oftentimes sounds that are normally produced as monophthongs sound a bit like diphthongs. The vowel i in the word it, for example, might sound more like e it, e it. Another sound that Goofy tends to diphthongize is the a ah vowel. It is common for English speakers to have regional differences with this sound. For instance, do you say jazz or jazz? Ask or ask? For Goofy, he usually says the latter option, a, eh, but will make it sound even more like a diphthong, adding a little y at the end. A, a, a. Absolutely. Component number six, prosody. Goofy has a bit of a drawl. This will mean that his speech tends to be slow and stretched out. His vowel sounds will be especially prolonged. With this drawl, you will also hear small slides in pitch in both directions. Instead of simply raising the pitch in a step-like fashion, we're going to slide the pitch up and slide it back down. <laughs> Go see a Goofy movie. Starring me, Goofy. <laughs> you ever think about the fact that I have a pet dog and I am a dog? Let's recap. Component number one, the vocal cords. Goofy has a low to neutral pitch range, a solid amount of compression, and has occasional voice breaks and vocal fry. Component number two, the larynx. Goofy has a very mobile larynx that frequently rises and falls. Component number three, the tongue. We want to raise the back of the tongue to add some brightness to his voice. Component number four, the soft palate. Raise the palate to give us that bubbly, goofy voice. Component number five, articulation. We want to make his speech very rhotic by overdoing his R sounds and also make sure to diphthongize his vowels. Component number six, closet. Be sure to really make his speech have a draw, stretching out and prolonging his sounds and sliding between different pitches. <laughs> Gorge, well thank you for watching New York Speech Coaching's Voice Breakdown, episode 21. Be sure to check out future episodes of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. See you next time, <laughs> Gorge.